Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to Ham Cured Smoke and the ninth installment of our IC7300 from A to Z series. This time we're going to finish setting up the audio out of that accessory connector and then we'll finally get back to manual section 4 and we're going to take a look at the AGC function. First, I'll just show you briefly how I did the cable for that connector. I started out with a quarter inch pre-molded cable that I had lying around that I wasn't using so I cut the other end off and I took the accessory connector pigtail that came with the rig and I put some heat shrink over the unused wires that I'm not going to need for this project and then I just soldered everything together and put some heat shrink over it for the completed cable here. Let's finish up our setup from last time and we will just take a quick look at the menu options we need for that accessory connector that we've got wired up now. So if you press menu and then you go to set and then we're going to go to connectors and the settings that we want are the ones that are right at the top of the list here. ACC slash USB, that's for all of these. The settings affect both the accessory connector and the USB audio interface. So you can't set things differently for those two outputs. Whatever you set for one, you're setting the same options for the other. So first one is output select. And you can see it's already AF. But if you go in, you have AF or IF. And I'll just put it to IF briefly and you can hear what you would hear if you had that. You get a very high-pitched squeal, which you may not even be able to hear on YouTube, I'm not sure. And then the output level, and we talked last week and said that it was a fixed level, and that's not quite true. It's a level that's independent of the volume control. You notice I have the volume all the way down here. Um, and actually, let me get out and see if I can find a signal. There was somebody talking here, but we'll find, uh, hopefully, something. And, uh, there's a big signal here. So, we'll go and we'll use this, uh, station here. We'll go back in, and if I go to output level, you can use the plus and minus, or you can use the knob and turn that all the way down, or turn him up very loud. And the other thing that you can do with this setting is if you press and hold, you can, uh, you'll get another sub-menu, and you can press default, and that sets it back to the 50%, which is where I'm going to leave it. The next option is whether you want the squelch to work for this output. Now, I have it on right now, so let's get out of the menu. Uh, oops, one too many here. Um, if I turn the squelch up, now you've heard the audio go away. That means that the squelch output is actually effective on the accessory output. If I go back uh, in and I bucks. set the squelch to uh, new, off, then it but will not great. squelch uh, this output. So even even if I turn it all the way up, and, and you see even the receive light goes out, but I still get audio yeah, out of this output. So the squelch there, bypasses this output if you turn that off. And I actually want it on for our attached. purposes, so we'll turn that back on. And then the last option, let me turn the squelch all the way up here, is whether you want to have the speech, uh, which we haven't played with the speech. That just tells you audibly what frequency you're on and what the radio settings are. And the beep, and you'll notice that as I've been going through different options here, you don't hear any beeps. So if I go in and we go in and I'll turn this on, now you hear the beeps as we go through the function. So the beeps now come out this port. So you have the option of turning all of those things on and off. So we're going to leave the beeps on. We're going to leave this set where we have it set. 
Uh, one last one is the IF output level. If I was setting the IF instead of audio frequency, this sets the level separately if you're going to do an intermediate frequency output. That's if you're going to do some digital software um, and you're actually going to get a wider chunk of bandwidth to receive uh, some special digital signals. We'll talk about that in another episode. So that's all of the setup uh, now that we've got the accessory connector hooked up. So let's look at some of the features in Section 4. Okay, we're finally going to get back into Section 4 here, and we're going to go through the AGC, or Automatic Gain Control function. The ICOM 7300, uh, like most radios, has a couple of choices for your automatic gain speed. Um, there are three choices, slow, fast, and medium. The way you access the automatic gain is with the function button. And then it's on this button here, and each time you press it, it toggles between slow, medium, and fast. And I've got some examples here of uh, different signals and what the effects are on it that we'll look at in just a few minutes here. But first, we're going to take a look at one of the things you can do with the 7300 that is a little bit more advanced than other radios and that is you can actually select the timing for the automatic gain control so if you press and hold the AGC button you get the fast mid and slow settings here and then it shows you the time constant for those so the default for fast is three tenths of a second so it will drop back to full gain in three tenths of a second when the signal goes away medium is two seconds and then of course slow is six seconds the nice thing is if you uh, select any of these you can adjust this through a number of settings now with most functions that we've been looking at where you use the menus you use the multi knob to actually change the setting Unfortunately, it's not the same on the AGC. I can't tell you why, but you use the main dial, and this turns it off, which gets uh, very distorted and noisy when you have a strong signal. And then you can cycle through all the choices, and you can go all the way up, so you can actually set all three of them the same. Not that there would be a good reason for that. So we'll just set the fast for half a second and then you can set the mid for whatever you want as well. I suppose you could set the fast for off if you wanted to uh, manually adjust that. Six is the maximum, and then you can go down in one second increments down to three, and then it takes you in half seconds, and then it starts to go in the four tenths, and sort of decreases the increments as you go down. If you want to put them all back to the default setting, you can just press and hold the default button. Oh, I'm sorry, you have to do it for each one individually. So if you press and hold the default button on each one, it will put them back to their default setting. That's really all there is to setting them. Um, I'm going to set this one to off again for a second while we've got a strong signal here. And you can manually adjust the RF gain with the RF gain knob but that's basically like driving a standard versus an automatic where you would be setting it all the time um, and you're probably really not going to be fast enough trying to do it manually especially if you're in uh, a contest or something where you're really trying to uh, tune through a lot of different signals quickly that's really about all there is to the automatic gain. It does show the setting right here on the screen below the frequency. Um, and again, you just toggle through it here. There is no other uh, shortcut that I'm aware of to, uh, to get to the function. You just have to hit the function button. But the really nice thing is if you don't like the timing that are the defaults, you can change it. And that's a feature that's not really available in many other radios. That's all we're going to cover for this time. For next time, 
I promise I'll have the audio fixed so that both the microphone and the radio will be in both channels. And then we're going to continue on through section four of the manual. I'm Tom, WA2IVD. Thanks for watching Ham Cured Smoke.